In the following tutorial we're going to look at using a ProSig P8000 with an accelerometer, a microphone and a thermocouple at different sample rates, additionally using tri triggers and pre-triggers. I'm going to begin by launching the data analysis software. And when the software loads it gives me information that I'm using the standard interface currently and there is an advanced mode available. I'm going to select the DAT data acquisition software from the side panel. And I'm presented with the signal setup matrix for the P8020 which I'm currently using. The configuration of P8020 I have here with me today is 16 channels of analog input and 8 channels of thermocouple input with 2 tachometer channels. And for the purposes of this tutorial we're going to be using one microphone which will be connected to channel 1, one accelerometer which will be connected to channel 5 and one thermocouple which will be connected to channel 17. To begin, I'm going to enter signal names for all of my sensors. So I have a microphone in channel 1, an accelerometer in channel 5, and my thermocouple in channel 17, which I'm just going to call thermocouple. I have to set to acquire those particular channels so that they're saved. And I have to set units for each of those channels. For the microphone, I'm going to select Pascals. For the accelerometer, I'm going to select meters per second squared. And for the thermocouple, it's already set to degrees centigrade, but I can select degrees Kelvin or degrees Fahrenheit as well. The microphone and accelerometer that I'm using are IEP type sensors. So I'm just going to scroll across in the signal setup matrix. And under transducer class, I'm going to select IEP for each of those two sensors. It's also important for me to set the sensitivity for each of those two sensors, which could be calibrated, but as they've previously been calibrated, I know that the sensitivity of the microphone is 50 millivolts per pascal, and the sensitivity of the accelerometer is 100 millivolts per meter per second squared. I need to set a representative sample rate for what I'm going to do here today. I'm going to select quite a high sample rate of 65,536. If I just click on the OK button you'll see that the sample rate has changed for all of the analog channels but not for the thermocouple channels. What I'm going to do is to select a lower rate for the accelerometer, I want to sample the microphone at a very high rate because it's acoustic data, it has a higher bandwidth, but the vibration data is much lower frequency and has a lower bandwidth. So I'm going to select 8192 samples per second per channel and that changes the sample rate for all of the channels associated with that card inside the P8000. It just so happens that I'm only using one so my sample rate for my accelerometer channel will be 8192 and you can see the change in the bandwidth which is displayed here next to the sample rate is now much lower. My thermocouple is currently sampled at 500 samples per second per channel. I'd like to reduce this, and to do this I can select the auxiliary sample rate, all of the different values available there. I'm going to select 50, click OK, and you'll see that the sample rate for the thermocouples has now changed as well. I'm just going to arm the system to check that the sensors are working correctly and we can see that the thermocouple is reading approximately 15 degrees which is correct, it's currently in uh, a cold glass of water. My microphone and accelerometer will just be picking up ambient noise and vibration at the moment. I'm going to create some stimulation for the microphone and accelerometer. We don't really see anything displayed there on the signal input. That's probably because the signals are very very small and we're not using very much of our dynamic range at the moment. So if I select the auto gain range button here, the P8000 chooses for me a gain of 40 for my microphone and a gain of 10 for the accelerometer and again if the accelerometer is excited we can see some inputs appearing there. 
what I'd like to do at this stage is to save the setup matrix that I've now created and I simply do that by selecting file save as I choose a folder I'm going to select a new folder on my desktop which I'm going to call trigger test and inside this trigger test folder I'm going to save this setup in a file called setup I also need to choose where my capture data is going to be stored and again I'm going to select the same folder that I just created on the desktop and I'll call the data data-001. It's important to end the file name with a number so that each and every data capture is automatically numerically incremented. And We can see that change now displayed in the target file edit box. I'm just going to save those settings again to make sure that they're all saved. And what I'd like to do at this stage is just to set up the real-time displays which I have available. I'm going to select uh, a time series for the microphone which is already drawn for us, a time series for the accelerometer which I'll add just to the right hand side and a time series trace for the thermocouple which I'll add on the right hand side again so I now have three graphs in time, the thermocouple, the accelerometer and the microphone. I'm going to use the nth octave real-time display for the microphone. I'm also going to use a frequency spectra for the accelerometer and for the digital panel for the thermocouple I'll select the digital panel. And if I just arm the system again we'll see that we have values now in each of those real-time displays. We can see the thermocouple temperature very accurately, we can see a frequency spectra of our vibration, and we can see a third octave and a time series of the microphone signals. It would be possible at this stage to simply use the capture button to record the data that we're currently looking at. The acquisition length is currently set to one second. I'm going to increase that to 10 seconds, just click on the OK button. And if I now click on the record button, we'll see in the bottom left hand corner that the data capture has begun and as the 10 seconds go through we'll start to see the data capture complete and at the end the system has automatically disarmed and if you notice the target file has now automatically incremented to the next number. What I'd like to do this time is to use some pre-trigger and I'm going to select three seconds of pre-trigger I'll click on the OK button and what that means when I arm the system as we'll see that the system has begun capturing already but once it reaches 30% it's stopped and the reason it stopped at 30% is that three seconds of pre-trigger is 30% of the 10 second data length capture if I was to now click the record button, the previous three seconds and then a subsequent seven seconds would be captured. And as we can see, that's completed for us now. What I'd like to do now is to be a bit more complex. I'm going to go back to the signal setup matrix. And if I change the start mode from immediate to trigger on channel input level, I can select one of the channels or multiple channels to be a trigger but I'm going to choose the accelerometer and I'm going to select an absolute level type trigger there are many of many other options available and I'm going to select a value of two meters per second squared what's going to happen now is that if that channel exceeds plus or minus two meters per second squared the system will automatically start triggering with our three second pre-trigger so I'll arm the system again and we can see the capturing building up up to 30% and now we'll simply wait for an acceleration above plus or minus 2 meters per second squared which has now begun and we can see the capturing taking place and completing so we've completed our data capture. I'm just going to make sure that we save the signal setup matrix and I'm going to close the DATS data acquisition software. And if we now look 
at the files we've just captured in some detail we can see that the initial file we captured was for 10 seconds we have a microphone accelerometer and the thermocouple the second starts at minus 3 seconds through to 0 and then up to 7 seconds and the same for the third data capture which was a triggered start and this completes our tutorial